Today we're going to continue our work on histograms, but focus on what's called a cumulative histogram. A cumulative histogram shows the running total of the frequencies. Remember the frequency is how many times something occurs in the interval on the frequency table. In a cumulative histogram, the bars build on one another. So for number one, we have the following set of data represents student scores on a recent math test. Create a cumulative frequency table and cumulative histogram of the data. All right, so this time our numbers are listed, not actually given in a table. So we have to put them in the table. All right, so we're going to start by making some tallies. We have, as we're doing this, it's easier if you check them off as you go so you don't make any mistakes. So 78 is going to fall between 61 and 80. 76, again, between 61 and 80. 80 between 61 and 80. 97 between 81 and 100. 92 between 81 and 100, 72 between 61 and 80, 58 between 41 and 60, 88 between 81 and 100, 92 between 81 and 100, 100 between 81 and 100, 88 between 81 and 100, 92 between 81 and 100, 78 between 61 and 80, 36 between 21 and 40, 80 between 61 and 80, 20 ooh, between 0 and 20, 92 between 81 and 100, 55 between 41 and 60, 88 between 81 and 100, 100 between 81 and 100, 72 between 61 and 80, and 64 is between 61 and 80 as well. So we have 1. 0 to 20, 1, 21 to 40, 2, 41 to 60, 8, 61 to 80, and 10, 81 to 100. So just looking at that, we can also get an idea from yesterday whether this is going to be positively or negatively or symmetrically skewed. So we have, in this case, since the lower numbers are 1, 1, and 2, and then it jumps up to 8 and 10, if I were to graph this histogram, my bars would be really low to start and then jump up and be pretty high. So remember from yesterday, this is what we would call negatively skewed as those lower grades are going to drive down the mean. So something to think about here. And not really needed to have the actual histogram to see that. We could see it just in the numbers. All right, now we have to make our cumulative frequency. So when we're talking cumulative, each bar is going to build up. So 0 to 20 is still going to be 1. But now our next bar is going to be 0 all the way to 40. 0 to 40 is going to be 2, because we're adding these two together. Then 0 to 60 is going to add these three together, so that's going to be 4. Then 0 to 80 is going to add those three together, or just add 8 to the 4, which gives you 12. And then 0 to 100 is 12 plus 10, which gives us a total of 22. And that last amount is the total number of students that took the test. All right, so now we have to make our cumulative histogram. So again, just like in the past, we have to set up our x and y axes. So on our x-axis, we're going to have our grade intervals. And we only need five intervals, and it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten boxes. So each box can be, or each two boxes can be one of our intervals. So this is going to be 0 to 20. This is going to be 21 to 40. This is going to be 41 to 60. This will be 61 to 80. And then 81 to 100. And then our highest number is 22, so we have to have up to 22 on the y-axis. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 boxes, but we need to get up to that 22. So we could count by threes for every other box, and that will get us up to 21. So we can use a lot of that space there. So if we have three here, this would be six, this would be nine, this would be 12, 
This would be 15, 18, and 21. All right, and now we can start building our histogram. So 0 to 20. Oh, and I should have, I just realized this should actually be 0 to 40. This should be 0 to 60. This should be 0 to 80. And this should be 0 to 100 since we're building, not just creating a histogram. All right, so now when we go ahead and create our histogram, our cumulative histogram, we start with 0 to 20 being only that one box. Then 0 to 40 is going to be 2. Then 0 to 60 is 4. Zero to eighty is twelve. And zero to one hundred is twenty two. So there we have our cumulative histogram. Now, if you're thinking back to yesterday's lesson, this cumulative histogram does look like it's negatively skewed. And we did say that the regular histogram would also be negatively skewed. But all cumulative histograms, for the most part, will be negatively skewed as the bars build. So you can't tell by looking at a cumulative histogram if it's negatively, positively skewed, or symmetric. You have to think about what the regular histogram would look like in order to figure that out. So then underneath this, we're asked to find the measures of central tendencies for the score on this math test. And in which interval does the mean and median occur? And which is a better indicator of the data? So we already talked about it being negatively skewed. And hopefully you remember from yesterday, if it's skewed in any way, the median is going to be the better choice, not the mean. So we know the median is going to be the better choice. But how do we calculate that? So there is a tool on your calculator that will actually do all the calculating for you. So you don't have to figure them all out just by looking at the list. OK, so using our list and our calculator, we're going to type in second stat for list. We're going to choose names, enter for L1. Oh, and I messed it up already. Clear, let's start over. Second, quit. We're going to choose clear stat, not second list, just stat. And then we're going to choose one for edit and enter. And in our L1, we're going to type in all of the numbers that we had for our histogram. So we start with 78, enter, 76, 80, 97. Be careful not to miss one, 92, 72, 58. 88, 92, 100, 88, 92, 78, 36, 80, 20, 92, 55, 88, 100, 72, and 64. And I know I got them all because I got to number 22, which is how many numbers there were. Hopefully, I didn't make any mistakes typing any of them in. So now I go back to stat, and I'm going to go over to calc, and I'm going to run what's called our one variable stats. I'm going to press Enter. And I'm going to press Enter all the way through again. And here we have our statistical values. So we needed to find our measures of central tendency which are the mean, median, mode, and range. So that x value there with a line above it is the mean. And our mean is about 77. So I'm going to use approximately instead of equals. Then if we follow that down, this n value here is the number of values that we looked at. So there's 22. The minimum was 20. 
the median was 80, the maximum was 100. So I know that the median there is 80, and I can write that down, and that's exactly 80. My mode is not shown here, but you can tell just by looking at the list what your mode would be. Okay, so we're not going to worry about that right now. And the range you can find by subtracting the highest number, the max number, minus the lowest. So 100 minus 20 is also 80. I feel like the mode is given, and I'm just not seeing it. Maybe not. Okay. All right. So now, again, we want to talk about which is the better indicator of this data and which in interval does the mean and median occur. So the mean and median are 77 and 80. And if you look back up at your chart, the 77 and 80 both fall in the same interval from 61 to 80. Okay. So that's a good indicator. But notice that the mean is lower. And again, that's because our data is negatively skewed. So we're going to say the median is better, is more, more representative because the data of math scores is negatively score, skewed. And I'm going to say that these are located in the interval 61 to 80. So that is using what we call a cumulative histogram. You guys are going to be on your own for the next side. Take your time, work through it carefully, and I'll be around to help you out.